Hey everybody, we're doing another first chapters today. This is a children's middle grade book called Serena Says by Tanita S. Davis. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll read the, there's like a little prologue, but we'll read that and the first chapter. Um, this is kind of a, it's a funny book, but it's, it's not just funny. It's also just, you know, kind of nice. It's about friendship. Serena Says. What's up, world? It's Friday, and this is Serena Says with your girl Serena St. John. It's been a week since I've seen my best friend, JC, and four days since her surgery to get a new kidney. And today, she's finally well enough to have visitors. I... Gah. I slam my finger on the stop key, scowling as I almost bump the screen and ruin the perfect lineup of my webcam, my laptop on a stack of books, my background, a plain blue sheet taped in front of my closet door, and my lighting my bendy desk lamp on the top of my dresser. Ugh, another choke. Why is my brain like this? It's like I can't even talk anymore. This is my first vlog, and I just want everything to be right. My sister Fallon makes vlogging look fun, like just looking at the camera and saying whatever. It's not easy, though. I feel weird talking to the camera. I'm not sure I like how my voice sounds. No wonder Mr. Vanderven didn't choose me to be one of 6A's morning announcement reporters this semester. He said reporters for Brigid Ogan's TV news show have to be good at public speaking and not afraid to look the camera in the eye and speak up. My sister said I just need to practice, that everyone has something to say and I just need to put myself out there. She even said when I get good enough, if I want to, I can upload a vlog of mine onto her streaming channel, since I can't have a channel of my own until I'm over 13. Coughing out the tickle in my throat, I practice to the air. Welcome to Serena Says. I'm your... No, wait. If I were at school, the real me, talking to people I knew, how would I say this? Determined, I restart the camera and sit up straight, staring down into its empty eye. What's up, world? It's Friday, and this is Serena Says. It's been a week since I've seen my bestie, JC, and four days since she got her new kidney, and today she's finally well enough to have visitors. JC and I have been best friends since I skipped from second grade to fourth. I was the youngest girl in our class that year, and the only black girl, too. Even though I was younger and smaller than everyone, JC asked me to eat lunch with her on the first day I was in fourth grade. She dragged me out to the swings to play with her friends, and boom! Just like that, we were besties. We've done everything together ever since. Since I'm class ambassador for sixth grade room A at Brigid Ogan Middle School, when I visit JC, I'll catch her up on all the news and report back to my class on Monday during homeroom on how she's feeling. It's only been a week, and depending on how she's doing, JC might be out of school for six weeks. So I'm super excited to see her when I can. Um, that's the story for now, but stay tuned for more. This is Serena Says, and I'm out. Chapter 1, AWOL Ambassador. If you guys don't know what AWOL means, it means absent without leave. Kind of means, like, you're missing and no one can find you, but you're supposed to be somewhere. It had been days, 168 hours. It felt like forever since I'd seen JC. We'd texted, and I talked to her on the phone every day she hadn't been too woozy, to catch her up on all the news. Since she'd left school in September, she'd missed the social studies movie in the library and Mrs. Vajar's first Boys Against Girls Life Sciences quiz. I'd missed having someone to eat all of the banana chips out of my trail mix. I'd also miss JC's squeaky laugh and the way she had to wave her hands around when she said anything. JC's doctor had finally said she could have visitors after her kidney transplant, and all the fun things I'd planned could finally happen. I'd had to wait till the weekend. Mom worked the 3 to 11 shift at the hospital and didn't have time to take me. But I was still going to be JC's first visitor, from school anyway. JC's huge Filipino family had been camped out in the hospital since day one. For my visit, I'd matched my fun outfit, black jeans, pink and white headband, pink fleece sweatshirt, to the giant greeting card in the pink envelope signed by the entire class. I also had a glittery gift-wrapped box in a black and pink polka dot gift bag, full of all the sorts of things that make a stay in the hospital a little less terrible. It felt like I'd been planning everything forever, but then I started sneezing so much Friday night my eyes watered. I wasn't going anywhere. Before JC had even gone to the hospital, she'd explained to our science class how her kidney transplant would work. 
J.C. had been given lots of drugs to squash her immune system so her body would accept a new kidney. Some of those drugs J.C. would have to take for years. The drugs meant that J.C.'s immune system remained too squashed to fight off germs at all. So after surgery, she could only have very healthy visitors, one at a time, who washed their hands in sanitizer goo and wore hospital masks over their faces. Even when she got out of the hospital, J.C. couldn't use public transportation, go to school or church, or even go to the movies for weeks and weeks until her doctor gave her the all clear. People sneezing like their heads were going to fall off should not even think about going near her. So now my mom and Leilani Camacho's mom were going to meet downtown so Leilani could be the class ambassador and drop off the card and gift instead. It was the worst. Leilani was okay. She joined our class on the fourth day of sixth grade, late because her family had just moved to California from Florida. She was nice enough, and everyone liked her, but she'd hardly been around at all before J.C. had gone to the hospital. Mom had met Mrs. Camacho at the parent volunteers meeting, so she knew Mrs. Camacho lived close by and would be glad to help. But Leilani wasn't me. J.C. was going to have a stranger from our new school that nobody even really knew coming to visit her. This was worse than awful. This wasn't fair. And on top of everything else, my throat was scratchy and sore, my nose was stuffy, and my ears hurt. Both of them. Sorry, kid, Mom said, picking up her car keys. I know how much you wanted to go, but you can't visit JC in the hospital while you're sneezing. Serena. You're getting a bad cold, and we don't want JC sneezing, too. I know, I know, I muttered, scowling at my handful of tissues. Mom tugged the gift bag from my grip, wiping the handle with a disinfectant wipe, as if even my fingers were leaking germs. What's the worst that can happen? You don't get to see JC today, and you miss her a little more. But you can talk to her on the phone or two-face, and I'm sure the other ambassador will take care of everything, my mother said in a soothing, Serena, calm down voice. She'll let JC know who the gifts are from, and she can give you a call if she has any questions. You can tell her everything. Yeah, okay, fine, I mumbled without any enthusiasm. Mrs. Camacho and Mom would work it out. Mom would tell Leilani everything she needed to know, and Leilani would tell J.C., who had picked out every single game and book of Mad Libs and color of nail polish. Madison Hughes and Eliana Morales and everyone else from our class would visit J.C. and catch her up. I would talk to her on my Two-Face app like we'd already done since she'd been out of surgery. But it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be me with my best friend, together like we'd been since the fourth grade. It wouldn't be the same at all. All right, and that was Serena Says by Tanita S. Davis.